before we can move on and study the rotation tensor which is the third and possibly the most important tensor in dynamics we will have to study something called the orthogonal tensor and before i do that i need to talk about three things which i forgot to do uh, about inverses and determinants of tensors so they are indicated over here the first is that if if i have a tensor a and it has principal values lambda i then lambda i inverse are the principal values of a inverse <coughs> something you can prove reasonably easily second thing is that if i have if i want to compute a determinant of a then the de determinant of a is simply the multiplications of all the principal values of a and the final object is is that the determinant of the product of two tensors is the product of the determinants of the tensors okay so the last one is uh, it i mean it's very similar to uh, computing the uh, to saying that the determinant of a product of matrices is the same as the product of the determinants of the matrices uh, let me just mention uh, kind of talk about number 4 a little bit uh, see we have said over here that determinant is independent of the coordinate system that means imagine if i have a uh, let me just pick the right one uh, imagine if i have a tensor which has three different principal values which are real okay so the most you know take a to be symmetric if you wish then correspondingly i will have three principal vectors correspondingly there will be a principal coordinate system and in the principal coordinate system a we have seen will be given by lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 and everything else will be zeros the determinant of a because it is independent of coordinate system is therefore simply lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 so that kind of proves this okay great now coming back to orthogonal tensors so what's an orthogonal tensor an orthogonal tensor q is something which operates on any vector a and the outcome is such that the the length of the vector remains unchanged okay so it preserves its length of course it could have rotated flipped fallen over done whatever so in terms of pictures if this was a then q a must be of the same length i hope it is of the well actually let me do it simple so i'll grab hold of this copy paste and i will try and rotate it so this would be q a okay so these lengths are the same okay yeah. of course they will not be in the same direction okay so that's what an orthogonal tensor is you may be tempted to think of the orthogonal tensor as something which is a rotation and i will show you shortly that is not always the case mirroring an object is another way to transform it linearly without changing its length and a mirroring is not the same as rotation okay here are some properties of an orthogonal tensor uh, let us uh, for the moment say that given orthogonal tensor let its principal values be lambda i remember principal values are the same as eigen values okay i don't think you can read it very clearly so let me write it again i again values okay so the first property is that the inverse of a principal uh, inverse of an orthogonal tensor is simply its transpose let me quickly prove this for you okay so well what we know is that the length of the of a vector remains unchanged well that means that q the squares of these are the same that means q dot a times q dot a is the same as a a uh, i'll remind you of the property that i think was given in either a tutorial or a homework that a dot any tensor that this is the same as a transpose a dot b so we'll use this property over here and we will get q transpose q 
ओके आई मेड अ मिस्टेक है दैट शुड ओह यार दैट इज फाइन क्यू ट्रांसफोर्स क्यू डॉट ए ओके वेज इट कॉन ओके ए ए इज इक्वल टू ए डॉट ए एलिमेंट ऑफ अनदर प्रॉपर्टी दैट वी हैड दैट फॉर एनी टू वेक्टर्स ए ए डॉट ए डॉट ए इज सिंपली प्रॉपर्टी ओके सो सो फार सो गुड सो वॉट आई विल डू नाउ इज आई विल रीअरेंज दिस थिंग टू लुक लाइक दिस ए डॉट क्यू माइनस आइडेंटिटी a is equal to zero so these two are the same okay all right now uh, what you see over here is that this is a symmetric tensor let me call it okay okay let me just kind of uh, have a seamless page here okay so what we have is that a dot b dot a is equal to zero for all a and this it is reasonably easy to show is only possible if b is zero which implies that q transpose dot q is equal to 1 which implies that q inverse is q transpose okay which is what we set out to prove okay uh, this step is uh, useful for you to do Uh, i'll encourage you that you show it okay coming to the next property over here uh let as i said the lambda i are principal values of q i will show you now that the uh, principal values have magnitude exactly 1 and in fact the only interesting orthogonal tensors are those for which two principal values are complex conjugates and one of them is either one or minus one okay so let's do this it's going to be a bit of a discussion so the first thing is uh so uh, let's assume let's uh, allow the sum of the lambdas to be uh, lambda i can be real or complex so that implies that the principal vectors let's give them uh, symbols vi can be or rather will be real or complex so if the if the lambda i is a uh, real then you will have a real principal vector if it is a complex you will have a complex principal vector some of you may start getting worried what's a complex vector well it's a vector with complex components just leave it at that i think you may have seen it in linear algebra okay now what i am going to do is that i am going to write down an equation which is true for a principal vector is that this is true okay and uh, oh well i have got two repeated indices over here only one over there that means i am not following the index notation so i will say no sum to indicate that okay very good so what i have over here is that q dot vi is lambda i vi that's a vector okay so let's uh, dot both sides by v So, I, uh, so let's see. So, by the conjugate of V i, okay. That's uh, let's uh, note it. So that's this is the conjugate of V i, which, as I said, could be complex. Hence, it's the complex conjugate. So uh, let's do that. 
let's apply on both sides vi dot q dot vi and that is equal to lambda vi conjugate okay so this is uh, this you can i mean you, you can write down the components and you can convince yourself that this will be the the magnitude of the vector okay now over here i am going to use this e formula again to shift q over here so let's do that and i will get q transpose dot vi conjugate dot vi okay uh, well q transpose is q inverse dot vi uh, this is a real tensor so therefore i can take the conjugate all the way out okay and write it like this and i will get lambda i vi square okay and then i will recall what we just did that if that if lambda i are the principal values of q then lambda inverse are the principal values of q inverse so that means this will become 1 by lambda i vi whole conjugate dotted with vi is equal to lambda i vi square well this bit and that bit will cancel and i will get so let's cancel this so these bits will cancel and i will get lambda i lambda i bar is equal to 1 which implies that the magnitude of is 1 which implies so if the magnitude is 1 then i have either lambda i is plus 1 or minus 1 or a plus i b with a square plus b square is equal to 1 so that's what i have over here that the magnitude is 1 it could be plus or minus 1 or these okay so these are the possibilities now uh, of course so here are the lambda i's the first possibility is that all of them are one second possibility could be that well maybe some of them are one and some are minus one okay here is one more possibility one minus one minus one yet another minus one minus one minus one then I have the possibility that plus 1 a plus i b and a minus i b at yet another one minus 1 a minus plus minus i b. So, here are all the possibilities that I have for lambda i's the three lambda i's ok. So, let us check let us see what is going to happen this is simply identity ok and this one is negative of identity right ok ok because ok so that is one these two Okay, so let me actually say it differently. So what now if a tensor so if if this was the case then Q so let me actually okay I guess that's the better way. So let me put A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. So in case A Q is 1 which is trivial in case D Q 
is minus 1 which is again trivial when i say trivial i mean the orthogonal tensor is not interesting it is either identity or negative identity case b and c you can show you can show are also trivial because no matter which coordinate system e you choose because in any coordinate system e q in e will either be 1 minus 1 minus 1 or 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 okay zeros everywhere else so they are like identity tensors of course they are not exactly identity tensors but they remain the same no matter what coordinate system you choose therefore they are just fixed tensors they are trivial tensors they are not doing anything interesting okay all right so that means the only two interesting tens the only possibilities which lead to interesting orthogonal tensors are these which is what i have written over here okay all right so that's a lot of discussion on the on the uh, second property